my concept of marriage was to get a good woman who would serve me. That I thought, you know, if you're successfully married, you found someone to serve you, especially men, because men are better than women. You know, that's what I thought. And I'd never thought at that point in time that I would be a marriage counselor. I wanted to be the wife whisperer. Now, you've heard of the horse whisperer and the dog whisperer and all that. See, I wanted men all over America to call me and say, Jimmy, my wife is rebellious. And I would say to them, the, ho- the wife whisperer is on his way. The problem was I couldn't get her trained. And so I knew I had to train my own wife before I could become the wife whisperer. But honestly and truly, I was, the concept of serving Karen was the furthest thing from my mind when I got married. I mean, it was a shock to me that she would even expect me to do anything. Now, I want you to listen to me. Here's why serving each other is so important. I want you to listen to what I'm saying now. The first is equality. The person who doesn't serve in a marriage is typically trying to dominate the relationship or they're checked out emotionally. When Karen and I got married, I was dominant. And I wanted Karen to serve me. I did not serve my wife. And I was dominant in the relationship. Men and women are absolutely equal. And if your marriage is going to work, you're going to have to serve your spouse. And serving shows your spouse, I'm not better than you. Number two is humility. We're naturally prideful. All of us have pride issues in our lives. Men and women, this is universal. Karen, you know, Karen wants me to do something. She wants me to change the light bulb. She wants me to get the groceries out of the car. She wants me to fold the clothes. You know, she'll just walk by the dryer and say, there's a load of clothes in there. Would you mind folding them? You know, and I just want to say, you're talking to an anointed man of God here. Excuse me. (laughs) I spend every day fighting evil. You know, I mean, (laughs) these hands were made to pray for the sick, not to fold clothes. (laughs) And excuse me. And she'll just walk by and say, would you fold those clothes? I fold clothes. I vacuum. I wash dishes. I don't cook for health and safety reasons. I, I've learned not to do that. The neighbors asked me not to. But I serve my wife. I have an office at home, and it's above our garage. And Karen will be coming down the street with groceries, and she'll call me and say, I'm about to pull in the garage. Show up. And she'll pull in the garage and I'll go down and haul stuff in. I, toting and fetching is one of the things I am so good at. <laughs> That's what I do all day long. And when Karen wants me to do something, I do it with a good attitude. Because I'm there to serve her. I'm a servant. And I'm there to serve my wife. And so it keeps me humble. I'm not too good for that. And I'm not better than she is. She is equal with me, I'm equal with her, and God has called me to serve my wife. And let me just say, after 40 years, we have a great marriage. We serve each other. I am married to someone who I know will serve me for the rest of her life, and I'll serve her the rest of my life. What a great marriage. But when a person will not serve, they're either dominating the relationship or they think they're too good for it. And let me me say this. One of the worst marriages I've ever seen is a wealthy couple And everything they wanted done, they hired, and they wouldn't do for each other. Doesn't matter how wealthy you are. It doesn't matter how many people you have helping you. You need to serve each other from the time you wake up till the time you go to bed. It's about about helping each other. It's about being a part of each other's lives. The third reason that we serve is intimacy. Jesus said in Matthew 6, wherever your treasure is, there will your heart be also. The meaning of that is wherever you're investing yourself, that's where your passion will be. If you're only investing yourself in work or the children or something else, your passion is going to be there. But because I'm constantly investing in Karen, it means I keep being passionate. There's no no trick to this. Wherever you're investing yourself, your passion is going to be there. Jesus said you can't separate it. You can't give your treasure over here and have your passion over here. So if you're serving kids all day long, If you're serving other people all day long, if you're serving yourself all day long and you're not serving your spouse, the the passion is going to fizzle. But when you're constantly serving your spouse, it means we're going to be intimate. We're sharing. I'm sharing my life with you. You know, we're going to go out and when we we used to mow the yard, we hire yard work done. They thank God. But (laughs) when we used to do the yard, we used to mow the yard. Karen mowed, which I loved. It was great for her figure. And uh, 
Karen mowed and I edged and cleaned up. And so Karen would get out with the mower and she, she was a great mower and she would mow and I'd come behind her and I would edge the yard and clean up and do all that kind of stuff. But we did it together. And there's just something about doing it together. One person's washing the dishes, the next person's drying the dishes. Not one person's sweeping, the other person's, you know, cleaning it up or whatever. It's, it's about sharing. And intimacy in marriage, you know, there's, there's so much pie in the sky stuff about intimacy. It happens when you're doing life together. And Karen and I just, we do life together. We love being together. We love serving each other. Intimacy. And the last thing is this destiny. You'll never reach your destiny. God looked at Adam by himself in Genesis 2.18 and he said it's not good for him to be alone. He needs a helper. He needs someone to serve. And of course, in Ephesians 5, men are told that we nourish and cherish our wives and lay down our lives for them. And so Karen cannot achieve her destiny without me. She can't. She can't do it. And I'm saying, if, if God called her to be single, obviously God can do anything. But he put me in her life to serve her to get to her destiny. I can't get to my destiny without Karen serving me. That's why God said it wasn't good for a man to be alone. Every, every good thing happens in marriage when you're serving each other. E- equality, humility, intimacy, destiny. But some people have stinking thinking. They have toxic thoughts in their minds that keep them from serving like this. But man, I work all day, and when I get home, I should be served. That was, that was me. That's, that's a chauvinistic way of thinking. No, you went and made money all day long. Now when you come home, you have another set of responsibilities, part of which is to serve your family and to serve your wife. You're not off when you get home. You're a husband now. You were something else when you were at work. A woman sometimes. I work all day. I serve the kids in the house. You serve me and the kids, and while you're at it, serve yourself. I'm too tired to serve you. Okay. Well, let me say this. If a husband's not helping her, you're putting a tremendous strain on her. But part of what a husband does when he gets home is to say, let me help with the kids. Let me help with dinner. Let me clean up afterwards and give you a break so that you have energy to serve me. But there's no, you can't, there's no excuse not to serve your spouse, regardless of how hard you work or how many kids you have. Number three, I served you while we were dating. Now we're married. Married, married people don't do that. People with bad marriages don't do that. But God said, for this cause, a man will leave his father and mother and cleave unto his wife. And that word cleave means to pursue energetically. And it was addressed to men. That was addressed to men. Men are supposed to be the leaders in this area to serve their wives. Married people, successful people do that in marriage. It's the people with terrible marriages that were in the sprint mentality that don't serve each other. Uh, Here's a good one. It says, "As as, as soon as you serve me, I'll serve you. I don't want to be the first because you'll wear me out. That's what I thought about Karen. I thought if I ever show her an ounce of humility and start serving her, she's going to wear me out. I know the sister's been building a list for 10 years and she's just waiting for that list. But I'll tell you what happened is, see, I like what Joyce Meyer says, the best, the best person does the right thing first. If you're the, be- if you're the weaker person, you'll wait for your spouse to go first. If you're the stronger person, you'll do it first. And Karen did it first because I was not the best person. She was. And so I'll serve you as soon as you start serving me. How about this? I'm going to serve you and believe God that as I begin to love you and meet your needs, God is going to move in our marriage. Thank you for joining us. Experience the life-changing series, Lifelong Love Affair, on CD or DVD. Follow your interests and get social by connecting with Jimmy and Karen and the Ministry of Marriage Today on Twitter. Become a rock-solid partner today and equip yourself with the tools you need for a successful marriage. $14, $28, or $56 per month. Choose the partnership level that's right for you. Become a rock-solid partner today.